We'd like to invite Tunapenda kumkaribisha our speaker of the day. Amnenaji wa leo and for him to come and present whatever God has in his heart. And so just uh, help me to welcome him with a clap as he comes to Praise the Lord. Can I have a little more volume on this? A little more volume, please. Thank you. Thank you. Are we doing translation? Wow. Are you good? Uh, you, look, sour? you look good. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, that's good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Just lift your hands up high. Stretch your back. Stretch your <coughs> physical man and your spiritual man. Psalm 121 says, look up to the hills. From where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord. In this crazy world, we need to trust him more than ever. Yes? And God is doing something amazing. Just lift your hands right now for a moment. I feel the presence of the Lord. You're to touch some people. In a very mighty way here. And I'm going to speak some things that are just uh, beyond... Imagination what God is saying. Amen. You may have your blessed seats in heavenly places. Bishop, it's good to be here. Thank you. Great man. Can we give the Lord a clap for the father of this house? The angel, the shepherd, the apostle. Come on, you could do better than that. That was just like, oh, yeah, okay. don't do that. Come on, give God a good praise for the servant of God. Oh, you're too, you're still like, come on, I want to feel, I want to feel from the heart. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yes. Mom, God bless you. Good to be here. All the preachers. How many preachers are here? Oh, yes. Bishop, thank you for the word. That was great. We received the words from the scripture and all that you said. Very good. Fathers are important. Amen. Amen. I have, I have a new book out that Archbishop Harrison Nanga has written the foreword for. It's called Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. They'll be available somehow. If you're online and you'd like to get a copy, you can contact the church or us. But I came to prophesy over Kenya and your town. Come on, somebody. Now, this is, when I'm prophesying, it's not going to work with interpretation too well. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Because are you a prophet? I, it's dangerous to be a prophet. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think you're, amen. So if I'm speaking in the first person when God is speaking, you know, it's like it's very heavy. Amen. But lift your hands. The Lord's going to speak to us. Lift your hands up. Can I do this in English a little bit? Can you just give me a minute? Is yeah. it okay? You can do it. Are you sure? Are you, are you very sure? Okay. All right. Thank you. These are the days, says the Spirit of the Lord, when I'm going to begin to raise up sons and daughters, as you were saying, man of God. Sons and daughters to be filled with the capacity of the greatness of what I've ordained for them. And God says this is going to be the day of the awakening of the church, the awakening of the movement in the house of God, not just the structure and the system, but the, the, the spiritual capacity, because God says he has many that are going to be in training for reigning to do great exploits and great things. And the Lord says to the nation of Kenya and also to the nations of all over Africa and even beyond in all the continents and nations of the world, I'm going to begin to cause the, the breakthroughs and the breakouts in great numbers and massive amounts of people Massive amounts of finances, massive amounts of, 
of, of, of economic breakthroughs and new things coming, flows of heaven and the earth, of provisions for the vision, because this is going to be the day of the mega church. Uh, this is going to be the day when I'm going to begin to expand every work that my hand is upon to mega proportions. And you're going to begin to see my favor, says the Lord, because favor determines your prosperity. And who you honor releases favor, and then the favor releases your blessings. And the Lord says, you need to honor me, you need to honor my word. You need to honor my anointing, and you need to honor my anointed. And God says, through this, the touch of transference is coming. As the man of God was saying earlier, the Lord's, I heard the Lord's voice and your voice in that particular part, that many are disjointed and out there. And God says he wants to gather people together. The networks have to be strong, and people need to find their place with the touch of a father and a mentor and a coach and a counselor and a person that's going to begin to raise them up. Uh, and God says, surely the connectivity in the body has been broken and disjointed. The days have been where men have hated other men. And God says, I'm very grieved at this. You ought not to hate your brother, especially if you say you're in the ministry or you're a servant of God. The Lord says, stop the hate. Stop the foolishness, stop the jealousy, stop the backbiting, stop the undermining, stop the gossip, stop the slander because it's grieved me. And the Lord says, by doing so, my, even my own people have uh, operated in these wicked ways. The Lord says, you've chased my blessing away from your life. But the Lord says, I want a full turnaround and I want people to come to repentance and to say, Lord, I'm sorry. You can say it right now in, in agreement with this. I'm sorry for every word I ever spoke that was wrong. I'm sorry for every wrong intent of my heart that I ever had toward another person in your church, in your kingdom. And the Lord says, surely I'll forgive you. But the Lord says, don't do it again. Like Jesus told the woman, he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause my my blessing to come upon my elect now. The Lord says, the wealth and the riches that you've even longed for that seem to have eluded you or been delayed or diverted or, or, or stayed uh, out of your hands, the Lord says, I'm breaking the powers of darkness that have caused a delay and a limitation. And literally, we're going to begin to see God's favor. Lift your hands. We're going to see his blessing in manifestation. The Lord spoke to me. And I preached this live at Kasserani Stadium on New Year's Eve. And the Lord said, this is going to be the year of manifestation. I see your sign up here. This is the year of expansion. Amen. It really is. Manifestation. How many need manifestation? How many know there's so many things that you've hoped for, prayed about, fasted for, but still they've evaded you. They've not come to you yet. I prophesy in Jesus' name, I declare right now by the Holy Ghost, these things are going to come into your hands. You're going to begin to see my favor. You're going to begin to see my blessings. And you're going to weep and dance with tears of joy and say, God, I knew it would happen somehow, but I didn't know when. And I waited for so long. But the Lord says, now is going to be the day and the time and the hour when you're going to begin to swim in the blessings, the river of blessings, the pools of water, all kinds of favor. All kinds of things that I've ordained, the Lord says, you're going to begin to see the touch of heaven. It's going to be beyond what you could even ask or think. The Lord says, get ready now, my chosen one. I'm coming to you. I was standing here, and the Lord, the presence of the Lord came all around me while I was standing there. And the Lord just said to me, to, he said to me, he said, I love you, my son. He said it to me. And I say that to you, too. God loves us so much. Do we know how much? To hear the Lord speak that, is that amazing or what? You know, we see, we think we know that, but when the Holy Spirit speaks audibly and says that, that also means he's about to do some great things for us. Close your eyes and lift your hands and let's pray together for a minute. Father, I thank you for the touch of your glory coming upon your people. Karashakihote, vasakala shandare sikete shukotea, zasakasha. This town here, God says, I'm going to begin to re-up it and revamp it. It's already happening. But the Lord says, do you not know that I don't want just the heathens and the other ethnicities of people to be owning the land and the properties and the industries? I want people from my church to begin to be blessed 
and to become great entrepreneurs, great people of wealth creation and production, but you have to apply yourself. Look at the people out there, how, how they apply themselves to business and how they take over and have so much. The Lord says, what about you, my people? The Lord says, I'm going to begin to raise up connectivity, amen, in the business world. And even through the ministry, even through people that are teaching uh, the word, they're going to begin to teach people how to walk in the laws of blessing in the realm of biblical economics and begin to understand how to prosper. I heard a, a testimony about this, um, this church in Singapore that uh, a, a man of God went to. And, and they, they didn't take any offering or anything. And then he was a little bit amazed, like, you know, why did, is nobody going to have the people flow in this? And they said, no, we took, we took our business people in a two-year course on, on prosperity. And he said, almost all of them now are millionaires. Someone lift your hand and say, there's hope for me. <laughs> almost all of them. So they don't need to be told to give. They have so much, they just empty their treasuries. How many could foresee a day like that? I don't know how it's going to break through, but it should just happen like that automatically. When people have so much to give, they just don't know what to do but give. Lift your hands. And that, I want to prophesy that's going to be you. Remember the scripture said in 3 John verse 2, Beloved. And then there's a name there, Gaius. I don't know anybody named Gaius. I finally did meet someone in Nigeria named Gaius, but his mother liked the scripture so much she named the Nigerian boy Gaius. But, you know, really that's talking to each one of us. So in 3 John 2, if you have your Bible, you can look there. Usually there's a space above that new uh, verse of the paragraph, but you can just draw a little line and write your name in there. Beloved Thomas, what's your name? Say your name. What's your name? Say your name. Say your name. Come on, let me hear all the names. All right. Wanjohi, Munene, Karyuki, Kachara. Who else can we got? Amen, amen, amen. What's your name? Say, beloved me. God desires that I prosper. Oh, yes, and be in good health. Oh, yes, and... Even as my soul prospers. The only way that's going to happen is when you're in the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, When you ask things according to his will, he'll grant you the petitions of what you ask for. John 15, 7, Jesus said, uh, if, As you abide in me, I say as because I do. But he really says, If you abide in me and, you, and my words abide in you, you'll ask for what you will and it will be done for you by my Father who's in heaven. Mark eleven twenty four said, the things you're desiring when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. We're, to, we're called to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And by the way, if you read scripture, you'll find out that we're called to be royalty. We're literally royalty. Jesus said uh, through John, he said in John, John the beloved said in, in Revelation 1, 6, I, we are kings and priests unto the most high. Your hand. Lift your hands. If you're a man, you're a king. If you're a daughter, you're a queen. A lady, you're a queen. And your babies are princes and princesses. Say, we are royalty. So what happened? <laughs> it's quiet. So what happened <laughs> along the way? Do you know the Lord says, poverty is a stench in my nostrils. And I'm tired of seeing it in your land. Lift your hands. Let's pray a minute. Father Kashela. Ah, we curse it in Jesus' name. I know many people have been speaking against it, talking about it, but it's time that people begin to live the life that they can just break it off of them. I prophesy you're never going to be poor another day in your life. You're never going to live in poverty another day in your life. God is going to so trouble you and disturb you and convict you to shake yourself loose from it and to get up and move into new things, and you'll begin to prosper but we do this by understanding the laws of the kingdom, the, the, the dynamics of what God's ordained for us. And so many of us have such treasure, but we don't know about it. You know, Galatians 4.1 is very powerful. It said, you differ nothing then but from a servant or a child, 
though you be Lord of all. Why? Because you don't discern. You don't discern. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Let me tell you something. Small things are for children, but big things are for adults. Lift your hands and just act like you're just pulling it down and saying, Lord, I'm grabbing a hold of the big things that you've ordained. If we ask God for something and it's too small, I think he gets insulted. He said, why don't you dream big? When your dream is bigger than what you can fulfill yourself, now you know you have a dream from God. The Lord spoke to me a, a few weeks ago. I, I preach a very unusual prophetic message. Uh, when I got there, I didn't know what I was going to say. And the Lord just dropped this word. He said, I, he said my son, tell my people, and he's, he was also speaking to me, I am fixing things. There are things that you work on to fix yourself, but you can't fix them enough yourself because of the, the evil deeds of other people, the stubbornness of other people, the pride of other people, the rebellion of other people, and all these things, and you can't seem to just shake it all loose because it's beyond your control. The Lord says, you do what you can do, and I'm going to do what you can't do. I'm fixing things. My God, I feel the anointing on this word. I am fixing things for my people. Lift your hands and receive that. I'm like the kingdom aerobics instructor. I'm always saying, lift your hands, stand up, jump around. Let's go. It's, it's, it's good to do the exercise, and at least to stretch our hands up for the Lord from, what, from who our help comes from. He's not asleep concerning Israel. He's not asleep concerning Thomas. Or you, say your name again. He's not asleep concerning me. The Lord has been watching all the things that you're going through, all the things that you're going to, and he's waiting, my God, he's waiting, he's waiting for you to rise up and take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve says, The kingdom of heaven permits aggression, and the aggressor will take it by force. Daniel eleven thirty two, second second part of the verse said, They that do know their God will be strong and do great exploits. I love the scripture in Isaiah 48, 17, where the Lord said, I am the Lord your God who will teach you how to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Now, the prophetic voice is the one who describes the mind of God. You know, that's our ministry. And we've done it around the world and touched and affected the lives of multiplied millions of people across the planet and millions and millions of people in the nation of Kenya. If I were to tell you the history of the prophecies, maybe I'll do that, in a, you know, look, mention a couple of things. The Lord had me prophesy when there was nothing like that seemingly possible. But it happened, and now look. Isaiah 45. So when you want a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, you really need the voice of the prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Why? Because we hear and we speak what's on the mind of God. And guess what? Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, Believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. Ezra 6, 14 said, They built and prospered by the prophesying of the prophet. Hosea 12, 13 said, By a prophet they were led out of the wilderness, and by a prophet they were preserved. The voice of the Lord. It's powerful. You could read Psalm, 1, uh, Psalm 29. It talks about the power of the voice of the Lord. Isaiah 40, the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Amos 3.7 says, surely I'll do nothing except I first reveal my secret to my servant the prophet. In other words, God will reveal that he'll speak. So guess what? Everything is voice activated. Our words are powerful. We need to watch our words. Lift your hands right now. I declare that every evil word that's ever spoken against me or you is canceled forever. I have already prayed this, but I say it again. It's canceled out. Whatever anybody thought of you that was not right, who cares what they think? What God thinks about me, I'm standing here. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I love you, my son. Why did he say that? He could have told me what scripture to share, what prophecy I should talk about. He just talks to me right here, standing right here in this house. 
So guess what? He's going to perfect those things that concern me. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He who has begun a good work in me will perform it. And he's fixing things. Do you receive that from the Lord? He's fixing all kinds of issues that need to be fixed. And every word, I yeah, yeah, Lord, I'll do it. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Th yes, yes. Isaiah, yeah. Isaiah 54, 17 is very powerful. It says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue, every tongue that rises up against me, I'll condemn it. For this is my heritage as a servant of the Lord. Guess what? Anything that's come against you, you have to do warfare against it. Also, any sin you've committed by omission or commission, a sin of omission is something you were supposed to do that you didn't do. A sin of commission is something that you did that you shouldn't have done. You have to repent of it because only repented of sin gets forgiven. Lift your hands right now. I have a few moments here in this session. I want to clean. I want to help clean the lives of people, you know, and, and listen to what the, the Lord is saying here. He, he wants to help you. So a lot of things that we're walking around in life, we're going to the job, we're going to the church, we're going to the house, we're going to the family, we're getting up in the morning, we're going throughout the day. But you don't realize that you're carrying still in your vessel, in your world, all of these negative things and occurrences. And the Lord says, I want you to be absolutely working on cleaning them all out. Say, Lord, they're all going from me in Jesus' name. And I want to give you a, a, a homework assignment. When you're praying later today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and, and those that are watching that couldn't be here, they're watching online, wherever, whenever, wherever you're praying, begin to say, God, show me what I've done wrong. Lift your hands. Show me where I've erred. Show me where I've missed it. Let me fix that right now. If you're too proud to do that, then what are you going to do next? If you can't stand and repent yourself, me, I'm standing in the pulpit. You know, for years, I wouldn't say things like that young, younger in the ministry. I mean, I think I did sometimes, but then the last couple of years, I felt this thing to lead the people in repentance and overturning of things that have been wrong in their life. You wonder why some blessings evade you, why some curses seem to have some, some, some license to work in you, and you don't seem to be... You know, getting everything you want to get in life. There's a reason for that. Proverbs said, Solomon said, the curse causeless does not come. It doesn't come without a cause. Also, the blessing causeless doesn't come. The blessing of the Lord, oh yes, Lord. Proverbs 10.22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow. Oh yes. Proverbs 13.22 said, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And a good one leaves an inheritance for his, even his children's children. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to be rich. Psalm 112, yes, verse 3, man of God. Wealth and riches shall be in the house of those that fear him, and his seed will be mighty upon the earth. Uh, I feel the presence of the Lord falling right now. I release this blessing upon you through the spoken word that God's going to raise you and prosper you. He's going to take you out of obscurity. There are many great gifts, many great business people, many great ministries, many great gifted people that have been hidden away. The Lord said, it's time for your unveiling now. And I'm going to begin to bring you out into the places of abundance. And you're going to begin to see the days of open doors in favor. Lift your hands. It's going to be absolutely miraculous. The Lord says, people that you've never known, are going to be a blessing to you. They're going to come from near and far. I love that scripture in Isaiah. Your sons and daughters will come from near and far. Also in Isaiah 60, the whole chapter says, your, 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 your daughters will come to be nursed at your side. Your sons will come from afar. And the sons of strangers will even build up your walls. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Isaiah 60 said, Arise and shine, for your light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The gross darkness comes to the earth. My light shall be seen upon thee. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Now, what would make you so great that a king would want to talk to you? Think about it. It's only the anointing. You know who had that experience? Joseph. The story of the life of Joseph, Joseph is found in Genesis 39 to 41. Genesis 39, 40, and 41. And after he went through so many troubles, the king, the Pharaoh, said, 
of all the people in our provinces, I've not seen one anointed by the Spirit of God like Joseph. So bring him to me. I have something for him to do. At the time, Joseph was in the prison, suffering. Psalm 105, verse 17, 18 says, they hurt his feet with, with, with uh, irons. In other words, the, 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 the things, the shackles that they put around his feet broke the skin and he had scars on his feet. Maybe he even walked a little, uh, had a little trouble walking straight. But the Lord took him from there up to the palace. Why? Because of the anointing. <laughs> Can I help you? The price of the anointing, if you want to really walk in spiritual power, is that you, you, um, you uh, consecrate yourself to the Lord in every way. I want to pray a prayer as we're going to close. As we're closing this session, I want to pray a prayer, all of us to pray together, of repentance, of consecration, of, 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 of asking God to give us the, his spirit of holiness. You know, holiness, holiness unto the Lord. The Bible even says without this, you cannot see God. Without holiness, no one will see God. You can't deceive yourself. Man of God, you talked about that in the message also. Boy, the angels are here right now. That's it, right now. Right now, right now. They just walked in here. Here they are. They're right here. I see them. Visitation upon this house. I'm here for this session, and I'm leaving for other meetings. I have other conferences tomorrow, the next day. I'm in three different conferences, or four, just in the next few days, one after the other. God has, has really kept us very busy. But while I'm here, I want to leave this visitation here that it will remain even after I've left. The Holy Spirit is visiting this house. And the people that come here are going to walk into a visitation from heaven. I see healings happening, but I don't want to, I don't want to divert into that right now. I want to stay in the word, in the message here. But I see healings happening. Deliverance is happening. Happening, happening, happening. Just, you just find yourself, you're healed. The Lord says, get ready. The price of spiritual power. Catherine Kuhlman, the great healing evangelist. She had a ministry, by the way. Preachers. She had a ministry. Catherine Kuhlman, the woman, they, first of all, they said a woman shouldn't preach in the southern states of the United States of America, where I'm from. I'm from New York City, all right? Praise the Lord. The city's so nice, they named it twice, New York, New York. Frank Sinatra sang the song, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. But down in the south, you know, in her, in her days in the 50s and 60s, uh, she had a very small ministry. She'd preach in little churches. And then she got hooked up with a man that wasn't the will of God for her. And one day she cried for days and days, and she walked away from that. She walked away from everything else, and she gave herself, lift your hands right now, she gave herself totally to the Holy Spirit and said, God, I have no other reason to live but for you to fill me. And the Lord spoke to her and said, you are not my first choice for this great healing ministry because I, get, I wanted to give it to several men, but they didn't obey me. So guess what? It's coming to you. I was in the President's Hotel uh, two nights ago uh, up in the VIP area where, where he usually sits. And uh, last Sunday we were with the First Lady and uh, it was really great, private meeting. And... and uh, this prophet was here from Zimbabwe, and he prophesied to me, and he started saying something about a man that has not fulfilled his ministry. He said he's finished, but he's not. There's more to do. And God says, I'm even giving this, some of that to you. Why? I heard the Lord say over the nation of South Africa, God said, I spoke to two or three men to be great voices, but they disobeyed me, and they lost the anointing. Let me tell you something. Every mantle that was ever in the earth is still here. Lift your hands. You know, we could sing this song by Dr. Paul Enche, the who has the largest church in the world, uh, almost 100,000 seats in Abuja, Nigeria. I'll be going there. He's invited me to his conference 
later in the year, and uh, I'll be there with him. And 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 he uh, he he talked about mantles are falling, fresh fires moving, the oil of God is dropping, the hand of God is here. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit that came in the upper room in Jerusalem, and I've been there. I was there. I led the prayer service in the, in, the, in the upper room, the actual upper room in Israel. And the Lord came in such power while I was speaking. It was like it was, it was the upper room experience all, all over again. Lift your hands. It could happen here today. It could happen here in Campbelltown. Do you believe that? It is definitely happening in the nation of Kenya. Lift your hands right now. Hallelujah. Rasha, Ratai, Sokoche. Father, we pray for this visitation. And, and, and the Lord says, every mantle that was on any servant of God, <coughs> Charles Spurgeon, D.L. Moody, Charles G. Lake, I mean, John G. Lake, Charles Finney, uh, Oral Roberts, T.L. Osborne, Reinhard Bonnke, the, the name and the list go on and on, Kenneth Hagin, all the mantles that were on these men, Lester Summerall, I mean, Smith Wigglesworth, Maria Woodworth Eder, Catherine Kuhlman, they're still here, those mantles are still here, but where are they at? Who are they on? It's a holy thing to carry the glory, you know? It's not just a cheap thing that anybody can just say, God, give me all that. It can kill you. Let me tell you something. The anointing can bless you, but it can also crush you if you're not ready to handle it. And I prophesy, I don't know why the Holy Ghost is telling me this. Evidently, there's someone in this room, and there's someone also watching online, and you preachers here all along the front row, and my great bishop and our friends here, I'm telling you the Lord is going to do something fresh and new. God's going to give you mere miraculous power to heal the sick, to, re to, to cast out devils, to flow, to preach, to teach, to raise up the army. And the Lord said, many churches are coming forth. And mega churches, not small ones. But you got to have spiritual power to do all that. It's not just going to come because you just thought, well, I hope so. Wow. Can you feel the presence of the Lord falling here? Right now. I can't I have so much more. Oh, my. I wanted to share so many prophecies and some other messages. I, I have to come back and do it another time. But right now, it just sees next two, three moments. I want us to consecrate ourselves to God right now. You could sit there, you could just sit there, you can stand, you can kneel, you could whatever. But bow your heads right now and say, Lord, be it unto me according to thy will. Say, I repent of everything wrong that I've done, every single thing wrong that I've done. We clear it today. And anything I was supposed to do that I neglected to do, <laughs> I will do it. I commit myself to you. Father, Father, you said in Isaiah 119, if I'm willing and obedient, I will eat the good of the land. But if I refuse and rebel, you'd be, the person would be devoured. The Lord, says your, the Lord says your blessing is coming from your obedience to me. And God says this thing about 3 John 2, as I started out, I'm going to close with this. Beloved, you, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Let me tell you where that all flourishes in manifestation is in his presence. When you're in his presence, when you're in his perfect will, everything works for the good. And now I prophesy, yes, Lord, I hear you. Every negative situation going on in our lives, any attack of the evil one, any oppression, every lack, Every fear that tries to come, any bondage that tries to stay around us, any limitation, I break its hold in Jesus' name, and we're going forward to the next level and the next dimension. The Lord is doing it in Jesus' name. Say, Father, I receive it in Jesus' name. Stand on your feet, everybody. Keyboard man, could you just play? Are you playing keyboard? Just come play a little bit something very softly, very softly. Not praise, just a little bit of synthesizer worship, just for one moment. Father, I release a fresh fire upon your preachers here from you. I say that very humbly with all humility. Very soft, very soft. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven upon them. Bishop, the Lord says, I'm refiring you. 
I'm reactivating you. I'm taking you. The Lord says the latter house will be greater than the former house. The Lord and Haggai. The Lord says anything you've seen to date is nothing can to compare what's going to happen. The Lord said <clears throat> North America and America, even Canada also, and the northern parts of the country and down through the country will welcome you in the days to come with great honor and respect. And the Lord says you're going to have a connectivity with people and it's going to be an awesome, awesome thing that God's about to do. You're going to see a new wave. And God said it's going to also happen in countries in Africa. The Lord said your phone is going to begin to ring. Contacts you didn't know, you thought, you know, you didn't know how they were coming. From many various cities, towns, and countries. And the Lord said, <clears throat> I'm going to have you to build a greater apostolic network. I'm going to have you to, yes, Lord, I'm going to have you to be a lover of my saints, a lover of my preachers, a lover of people, even that have been wounded, a healer, a, a man that could put his hand on the shoulder of them and say, I love you. Be healed in Jesus' name. You have a friend in me. You have a father in me. I'll help you. I'll mentor you. I'll counsel you. I'll help you. I'll talk to you. I'll pray for you. And the Lord says, watch how many people begin to come. This is going to be the day and the hour when the sons are going to come from afar and the daughters from afar, even to be nursed at thy side. And the Lord said, I'm raising up the network. I'm going to begin to cause this thing to flourish in these days like you've never had, seen before. I see you visiting many prominent people, prominent leaders, and they're going to love you because of your kind heart. There's something different about you. And the Lord said, I'm even deepening the well of my love. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Uh, the code word in this hour for the church in Kenya is going to be love. Stop hating brethren. Stop fighting with people. Stop trying to be jealous of them or undermine them. Just love everybody. Forget about all of it. Don't hold any grudges. Even if someone was wrong, people have done such horrific things, said such horrific things, attacked people, even other preachers, in such horrific ways. The Lord says, forgive them all and forget about it. Because I'm taking you now to a new destined land, a land of flourishing that flows with milk and honey. You're going to begin to see it's going to be like rivers of love, oil, power, grace, the Holy Ghost pouring out. You turn here, there's miracles. You turn there, there's miracles. You turn there, there's provision. And the Lord says, I'm going to have people come to put monies in your hands, the things and projects that you want to do. I prophesy that to every preacher here right now. Lift your hand. God, God is going to begin to bless you and provide for your vision but the number one thing is that he has your heart fully give your heart to him right now give your heart to him say a big yes to him right now and say lord please cleanse me from all unrighteousness let me give you a great scripture as i'm i'm, I'm dropping the mic in a minute the lord says isaiah excuse me john first john one and nine first john one and nine the scripture says uh, uh lord i confess sin to you my sin to you and forgive me of this and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's a prayer that believers should pray every day. The, the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath, right? Uh, you, you shouldn't let the sun go down with you holding anything in you. Let it all go. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Put your hands out wide like you're going to rise up and fly. And say, Lord, take the weights off. Take the burdens off. I release them to you. You know, the scripture says also in Philippians 4, cast your, cast your cares unto the Lord for he cares for you. We need to get rid of every weight, every, every little sin that, like the foxes that spoil the vine. Every little problem, every little issue, just forget about it. And let his peace and his joy flood your life. By the way, I wanted to say I love the name of your church. I know it means something good. <laughs> When I say the word, I feel something like in me that this word, this word of your name of your church means something good. Let it be manifested in your life. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? Do you love me? Can you blow me a kiss and I'll blow you one? Ah, wow. I feel the love. I feel the love. I feel the love. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus one right now. Hallelujah. He's the Alpha. Yes, yes. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Everlasting Father, the bright of the morning star, and he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm Thomas Manton the Ford. Love you much. I'll talk to you on the next round. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and receive it. Be blessed by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give our bishop a hand as he's coming. God bless wow, you. Wow, 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 wow.